Formation Flying, a core skill for anyone getting into multiplayer or DCS campaigns. Not just a cool way to take screenshots, Formation Flying is a core part of everything from air to air refueling to dogfighting. Today we're looking at techniques to use your eyes to help you improve your Formation Flying skills, with the end goal being air to air refueling. Now, Formation Flying is all about holding a general, fixed, or thereabouts point that you can float around in near your wing lead. Now we do this usually by making use of reference points, so an example for the Hornet, a really good one, is this roundel here, and the end of the missile, or in the case if they haven't got one, the rail ends about here. And you try to bring this to here and line them up and keep them there roughly. If you're maintaining that position you are maintaining a constant angle from your lead, and it helps you maintain that constant position relative to them. It also allows you to see the error, you can see here the missile is forward. What does that mean? It means that we have to go forwards to bring this missile back on the panel to put it back here. In a similar way we could also use say the tail structure here, so at the moment you can see it ends at a V up here, but if we were to move backwards we could bring this V so it joins here, and it comes up like something like that. Now you could use that as a way to maintain a further distance back, and similarly you could also use the measurement for the wing here. You see how much distance we got there? Increase it, decrease it, we can tell whether we are moving up or down. So as we play the video, you can see how this changes as we're coming forwards, so the missile's moving backwards. Now you should always look through to the furthest point, because these points closer to you are always going to move further and faster. If you try and correct based on these, you can end up overcorrecting as they exaggerate the movement a little bit. So you can see now we're about on the roundel, so we hold it there. And we can now see as we move and drift, so we're a little bit high, we can come up, now we're a little bit, sorry, we're a little bit low, so we'll come up, and we drop back down low again, and so generally you just kind of, you don't want it to be perfect, you don't need to be rigid, that's a big mistake is trying to keep this point here perfectly fixed and fixating on it and ignoring everything else that's going on. You want to keep in the vague vicinity, you should be fine with just drifting around, but the goal is that you drift around slowly and in a controlled fashion. Now in this example we are maintaining the position once again and we're going to move away from our aircraft. So we rolled over left just a little bit to change our relative heading and we're going to start drifting away and as we do it we have to adjust our power to keep these two roughly together. You can see we're actually drifting forwards. So we reduce the power, we come back and we can maintain this same angle relative to our lead at any distance so long as we can see those two points. And now as we come back you can see the angles despite being the same here, are shifting a little bit here because of the difference in parallax. So you've got all these different reference points, so you could actually use that in some respects to measure your distance for example. Now all of these little details are what you can use to help you see your own motion. If you can see what's going on in the other aircraft, you can tell where you're moving and you can make more accurate corrections. Okay, so let's start applying that to the tanker. So we can see here, we've got the boom, everything else in front of us. Now what I typically like to do is line up these two engines together. Now this gives you an opportunity to practice your formation flying without the stress of trying to catch this boom. So we're going to come forwards until the engines are on top of each other and position ourselves high enough that the guys in the front can see us. Now this is nice, relatively easy, you've got a fair bit of margin for error. Just overlap the engines, so you can see here we need to come forwards to bring this engine back and we also need to go up to bring the engine in line. Now once again it's all about simple gentle movements, you don't need to do everything once. You can do it in iterative additions, slight corrections, slight corrections, slight corrections, slight corrections until you get the result you want, and the result you want is just to be drifting forwards or backwards at the right pace. You can see, there we go, we're about now in position, so actually we need to go up to bring that up. And what we're doing by having these visual references is of course we can see the correction we need to make, and we can see how much of a correction we need to make. So there you go, we're now perfectly aligned, but we're going to drift past through it. And we're staring down at the engines, we can also reference the tail if we want for forwards and backwards, but these engines are acting as our primary reference. Now, like I said, this is a good way to practice some formation flying without trying to catch the boom. It's something you can do, something you can succeed at without extra stress of the constant failure or trying to get fuel. Another good way you could do is you could swap from one wing to the other and practice going between them to help you master control of your aircraft. 
Much like we can use lines on other aircraft to reference our position, we can also use parts of our canopy. For so example, this line here, the, ha the grab handle, we're trying to keep it so the aircraft stays roughly in the middle as we cross over. Now as you watch, you'll actually find I hit the turbulence here, so we can now say in the future, well, maybe I should be a little bit lower and keep this wing above this to keep ourselves out of the wing turbulence coming off the back of here. And about now we start to get a light bit of turbulence and you see the aircraft's on the tip that way. Now as we line ourselves up on the tanker, we start using visual elements to arrange ourselves. So I quite like to take this corner and try and put it here by the time we're up close. But of course we're not there yet, so these reference points look different. So we'll jump forward. So now as we approach the basket you see I'm keeping this close to the basket here and I'm starting to look up. I'm referencing this tail to judge how far forward I am and you can also use this span here. I don't want to look at the basket, I'm looking through the basket at the aircraft. We're using this to judge our movement in this axis and we're using this for the forward and backwards and partially the tail for up and down as well. So as we catch the basket, gives us a nice little generous jump, we now start to reference more directly the tail. This here in particular tells us our forward and back motion so we can use this to measure how far we've shifted and give ourselves a target to maintain position. That way, when we start drifting, it's not going to surprise you. You know you're drifting. You can see there we've got that perfect position on the corner of the HUD. Now these sight lines will all vary depending on how you sit, where you move your head, and so it is important you keep still. But also if you're in VR, for example, you're not a cyclops, and so your viewpoints is different. It's going to be offset to the right and to the left for each eye. Now all of these little details are what help you position yourself and to tell you where you are so you can then move forwards or backwards to correct for it. It gives you a position and if you can hold all these things in perfect step you will stay perfectly still or be able to navigate yourself to a specific point relative to the other aircraft. Taking a look back in time into Spitfire we're again going to use our cockpit for reference so you can see this quarter panel here. We're using this as a reference point to judge our position. Now we're trying to keep a rough aim for here so we're using the bolt there lining it up with the guy's head but we're also using this window to gauge the distance because obviously the more this aircraft fills this box the closer it is so that gives us a gauge for distance so there's all these little details that you can pull and again we're looking at the difference between the engine there and the wing to judge our height using the forward and backward part of the canopy provided we don't move our head and there you go we're back in that kind of perfect position so the head is aligned with the bolt and we drift it off down and so we can see it's gone up on the window we know what we need to do to correct and we have a goal in mind when we're trying to fly formation. Now there's one last extra cockpit line of sight reference we can use and that is the top of your actual physical monitor. Now of course if you're in VR this might be the top of your headset provided you don't move too much and again use these details to reference how you're moving. You can see the distance here between the top and that window. We can tell we're going forwards. So you've got a tool everywhere you look you just need to get used to using those to frame and reference your motion because the sooner you catch the drift, the sooner you realise you're moving, the less work it takes to fix the correction and you don't need to go to drastic measures. You can slowly drift forward, slowly drift backwards, it doesn't matter. So long as you're moving in a positive direction or not moving at a dangerous rate away from where you want to be. Now another often overlooked aspect of visual sighting and joining up on a tanker, you can see here we have the tanker here. We are flying directly toward him. It's that little dot there underneath my cursor. Now, he's just there, we can see him, we're going toward him, we know we're gaining, because we've referenced our speed versus his speed reported on the radio. But, you notice how it creeps up on us. We haven't got any good references, so he's now wider than before, but it's easy to miss this and ignore it, and look how suddenly quickly he's staring down on us. And it's already way, way, way too late to ever stop ourselves in time, so we overshoot. So what can we do to make it easier for us to judge our closure speed visually? So instead of flying directly at our aircraft we want to meet with, we're going to fly off to the side and below to make sure we have a good line of sight. And you can see here it's moving backwards and we've now got a means to measure that motion so we can see we're moving quite fast so we're going to reduce the power and we're going to ease our way in. You can see the motion because of the way it's moving relative to our aircraft. This means you are much less likely to overshoot and you can gauge whether we are closing or getting further away or simply stopping. So you can see now he's hardly moving so we are about the same speed. We can then accelerate and using the same technique of position keeping we could then move ourselves closer to them. So you can see he's moved drifting so you can see he's now drifting forwards which means we need to add more power so we increase our airspeed 
and then he'll start coming backwards on the canopy bow again, so we can see our closure rate. We don't need the radar, we don't need our airspeed indicator in particular. We can look out the window, can focus on the formation, and gauge the distance quite nicely. And this will help you avoid overshooting your tanker, or your flight lead. So back on the tanker, but this time I'm going to show you where my eyes are actually looking. This purple dot here represents my line of sight, it's eye tracking from a VR headset. And unfortunately I could see that dot, so I'm not going to look exactly where I was wanting to concentrate to you know, keep the dot off of what I'm looking at. But of course also I'm going to be using peripheral vision, which I can't show you visually inside this. So we'll see the purple dot, it's on the engines, I'm focusing on the formation, and once we resume... You can see that I don't just fixate on one point, I'm looking forwards, I'm looking backwards. I'm trying to keep the alignment there nice and steady, and you can see I've gone up, I've come down, and we're going to start moving backwards now, so we're going to start referencing the tail. There we go, you can see I'm starting looking back, because I'm trying to gauge this distance here as we move around. I'm checking over the shoulder for traffic, and they come across, I'm looking at the engines and the rate that they move away from the shoes are large. And then we're starting to try and figure out the centre line to line up. And they start looking at the tail position to judge how far forward or backwards it's going. We're watching these fins, so we can see some of the motion. You can pair that to the window back behind here. And you can see my eyes are constantly working, dotting around, looking at the different reference points. I'm even checking the wings for my lineup, checking the tail for my closure rate, looking at the body, trying to judge if I can see those yet. We stabilize and request pre-contact. And then we start moving forwards. And again, we're looking at the boom, the wings, the tail, the positions here. So you see we're actually left of line up a little bit here, that's not too much of a problem. As we come forwards, I'm looking at these engines, so I'm trying to judge the distance, the rate at which these close and move. I want to put these in a static position, and I'm also trying to reference this point here, but you note I'm not looking at it constantly. This will tell us where we are relative to where we want to be, but it won't tell us our rate of drift. You see now we made contact, and so my goal is going to be to try and keep the top of my vision to see about there, and I'm going to use these wings and the centre line to help me reference where I am and where my drifting is happening. So as I see these wings start to come backwards, I know I'm drifting backwards. You see here, more and more of this, that means we're going backwards. I can then see this happening on the screen here, but I try not to focus on it, and you shouldn't either, because if you tunnel vision or zoom all the way in, you're going to lose that situational awareness, that vision, that peripheral vision you need. So one more example, once again with the basket, and again I'm looking at the different parts of the aircraft around my canopy boat to judge how much I'm moving. See, I'm focusing the distance here, and I'm also checking out the tail here. Now I'll lean forwards to reach my keyboard, so don't mind that. And now we've got the basket coming out. Now you see, every once in a while I dot to here. I'm trying to gauge my forwards backwards motion, trying to gauge our up and down motion with the gap here. We're waiting for our basket to come out. As we do, we're going to start moving right. See, I'm start referencing the position of that tip there, this tip here. We're coming up. We're stabilizing again, and then we're going to move forwards to the basket. So as we gently work our way forwards, we're just trying to drift in a gentle fashion. We're not trying to correct in one fell sweep. We're trying to do it additively in slightly bigger curves until we get the motion we want, and then we start countering that curve. So you see, I'm constantly dotting my eye around, looking at each individual part of the aircraft. Watching that for the tip, because I'm rolling. The wingtips make a good reference for your own roll, because obviously you want your wings to be level with theirs. This becomes particularly important if you're in the middle of a turn. Now you see, I haven't looked at the basket barely at all. I've got a little close, and though I've looked up here, and I see we need to come increase, increase this gap, and come up. Every once in a while I check the basket for the lineup for the probe, but most of my focus is on the aircraft. We're judging the tail distance like before. And then as we get close, you have one cheeky glance to make sure we're lined up, and we catch the basket, and my eyes are focused here again. We then need to move forward, and start referencing the tail, and the boom position, to keep everything in trim. Now, you've probably heard it plenty of times, never look at the basket, and I'm going to demonstrate why it's a bad idea. Because your eyes can in fact betray you. So once again behind the basket, and this time I'm going to look at the basket as we get closer, and you're going to notice what happens. We're going to start wobbling up and down. Now watch how fast the basket moves. You see how the aircraft looks very still? The basket starts to get closer, closer, 
and here we go. We start looking more and more at the basket and immediately I'm starting to lose frame of reference. The basket moves a lot, so my eyes tell me I need to make a bigger correction. If I was watching the plane, less of a correction would appear to be needed. So what happens is this reference point is so close to you, even a tiny motion will make a big difference visually on your position on the canopy. So let's demonstrate that another way. So we're taking some screenshots from the same video and we're going to show frame by frame about half a second in between. So when I jump it forwards, we can see a ghost of the previous frame. And you can see a kind of blur around the aircraft now as we move forward. You can see it again, we can see the basket has moved upwards and to the left. And again, it's kind of stable now. And then one more time and suddenly you can see how this basket has moved a huge amount. And you might be thinking, oh well, it's moved this much. I best move myself to do it, but then look at the aircraft. You see how not much has actually changed. In fact, the biggest difference here is that the aircraft's wings have no longer level. That's because our aircraft is rolling. You can see that in their wing position and in the tail position. Now this and this right here is why people get stuck in an oscillation. It's because they see the basket move a lot, they make a big correction. The basket moves a lot again, they make another big correction and you end up chasing the basket up and down, up and down. But if you look through the basket at the aircraft, you can see the changes are much more subtle. And so you reference the aircraft instead to judge your changes and assume and trust the basket will move where you need it to in a more comfortable fashion. In fact, you'll see this when people join up in formation where they've been comfortable flying at a greater distance. Then as they come closer, they were stable, stable, and then suddenly start yo-yoing up and down. The closer you are, the greater relative angular change visually happens for less actual motion. You want to be looking through the aircraft and at your references and to the furthest point, but also understand and resist the temptation to react quickly. The same corrections as before are required, not more, despite what your eyes are telling you. To one final note on VR. If you watch these two side by side, left being flat, right being VR, in flat screen I hit the edge of the basket, and yet I easily got a bullseye in VR, and that's because there's no depth perception so you have to work a little harder. I simply couldn't tell that I was off. We are only perceptive of depth on flat screen with the aid of motion only, which makes these techniques even more important. Concluding, it's a time prioritization thing. You've got to make it natural to run a sleeper checks as you fly. Some of it seems obvious, but it's easily forgotten in the heat of the moment. Actively thinking about it will help you to learn to do the same more passively with experience. Much like a pilot knows how to land a case on recovery and do it on their own, the LSO ensures they're honest and using all their teaching. You have to ensure you focus just the same. At the end of the day, formation flying is ultimately about practice, practice and practice. But with this series, I hope to teach you a little bit more about the theory and techniques involved in formation flying to an end goal of refueling successfully, which is one of the greatest challenges in DCS. For the time being, keep practicing, hope you enjoyed, and take care.